Okay. We are going to begin in a couple seconds here. There's all. Check, we're on your live, beautiful, and let's do this. Hello, everybody. My name is Michael Markowski. Welcome to my studio. Today, you and I, hopefully you're going to join me, we're going to draw different textures. So we're going to explore things like wood and glass and plastic and different kinds of fabric. And we're going to learn how to, we can use different types of what we call mark making. So how we can make marks with a pencil on a piece of paper that suggests different kinds of materials. So that we can create a, a contrast between if somebody's wearing a leather glove in their skin or if somebody's wearing a plaster mask versus a plastic or a glass or those different kinds of things are really important because it helps create um, a more complex kind of landscape or a cityscape or portraits etc because if we draw everything exactly the same then everything looks like it was made out of the exact same material which gives everything kind of like a you know a bland kind of quality because everything is the same which is not how our world is we're, we're we're surrounded by different kinds of textures and materials obviously if you were making a comic or a video game or a film taking place in the future where everything was made of the same material like uh you know everybody was made of plastic we were all androids are made of plastic and we're surrounded by plastic things then it would make sense to have a fully unified world but since we don't live in that probably dystopian kind of world we want to be able to describe the complexity of the the world that surrounds us so we're going to do um play around with a whole bunch of different objects so if you have ideas of things that you would like us to explore drawing, type them into the comment section um, on the live stream right now, and I'll do my best to get to them throughout, because I see here, uh, oh, somebody's trying to call me. Um, you know, Heidi said a, a, a feather would be great. Um, what are some other things here? Palash said fur. Uh, Heidi says metallic surface, Peter says carpets, Plash says rugs, right? So lots of different ideas. I, some of those I don't, I don't have a rug right now I can dig up, but we could find something on, uh, online that we could study from. And I've also got a little setup right here. You'll see there's a special still life camera set up so I can put things here and control the light a little bit. And, um, okay. So I think to begin with, why don't we kind of build on what we were doing last class. And last class we were drawing textures and, and well, fabric and folds, mostly from my imagination, right? We looked at a few things online and, and from some of the handouts in some of my classes. But one of the things we did is we drew like a, um, a hypothetical ball underneath some fabric. Right, so what I thought today, and this is actually inspired by a drawing I just saw that Heidi sent in um, of, of this very same thing. So we're gonna draw a little bit, we're gonna do a lot of drawing from life today. So um, let's get out your colors or, or just regular pencil. And we are going to kind of use our normally, you know, the first, 15, 20 minutes or so, we spend some time doing a warm up drawing. So, I think what we're going to do is we're going to fold the warm up into what we're into the. We're just going to start drawing, basically. So, let me see. What I need is another view here. Um, let's get the. Uh, actually, 
Actually, let's put this here and here. Put this. Okay. So I'm just going to. Here's here's the the uh, still life camera. Let's we'll put a ball. Even just drawing this ball, I think, would be a worthwhile activity. Um, and then, what's the best? Where can, how could we drape this? How about let's put this right here for a second. You know, one of the things about making a still life is controlling. Uh, if you want the actual um, the look and shape of things All right so until you find something that you you're happy with and that you do want to draw so right now what I'm trying to do is is actually to simplify things a little bit just you know as I said this is our warm-up drawing so we don't want something too complicated right off the bat. Um, let me see. Maybe, maybe that's too much. Okay, I'm actually just gonna take down the brightness a bit there. Is it too too dark? Okay, that's bright. That's on my iPhone there, so not the uh, the most sensitive. Uh, let me see. Okay, so there's that. I'm gonna make another one here for this cloth. Sketchbook here. Okay. So, how would I go about making this drawing? Well, um, let's go to a blank page in our sketchbook. And it's kind of weird because the object's here, but I'm actually, I've got a monitor right in front of me. So I'm going to draw from the monitor so that you're drawing the same thing I'm drawing. So that rather than me draw, because I'd be actually drawing the back side of this thing here. So, which is actually helpful because drawing for, off of a screen is like drawing from a photograph, right? The, the world is being flattened onto the screen versus me looking at something with both of my eyes and then flattening it in my brain, which is actually a pretty complicated thing to do. So this using the camera to take a picture or, or working from a video already saves us some time, uh, reduces the complexity of using our binocular vision. So that would be, you know, just a, when you're learning one strategy to help you. Having said that, once you kind of do this a, a bit, then it would be you should try drawing directly from life because it is different, different for sure. Okay, so as you know, I like to use some colors uh, just so you can see the different steps. I actually went and got some new pencils today, some new colors. Um, and just by the way, so these are the maybe I'll just kind of zip down here. Oh, I guess. Uh, um, this, or maybe I'll just put them, you know, something like this, just so people can see. I guess it doesn't show up very well. These are, um, and I'll put a, maybe a link below here and uh, to where you can buy some of these supplies. But these are Caron Dash, which is a old, old French pencil company and pastel company. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. Let's just start drawing. So. How would I do this? Well, 
just the, I'm going to use the frame of the the screen here. Actually, I'm just going to move that over just a tad. Because it's almost sort of like a sketchbook, <clears throat> right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw kind of a bit of a, a square to kind of get myself into the zone here. <sighs> Right, so you know maybe if I want, I could even to get even more specific, I could get a little bit higher. But this just tells me that this is I'm going to make everything fit within this boundary, right? And obviously, there's it's a way more complicated than this shape. But like the block in method I talked about before, this is going to really help me kind of locate everything on the page and so that I don't kind of find myself jumping off onto the side accidentally. So this was my addition because I thought I'd maybe make it a little bit bigger but this where I made this line actually kind of works well because this is this shape inside and I'm actually going to just draw this a little bit darker even though I can't see it it's gonna help just inform how I shade this whole object. So if, if you have the opportunity to kind of see what's under an object, that is helpful. So I'm just gonna start sketching some lines out from here. And I'm not too worried, again, this is our warm up drawing, so I'm not too worried about making it perfect. You can see I went out of the out of the boundary a little bit. Or maybe it's a little too long. I'll try to respect this boundary I created. So just kind of getting the basic shapes here on the page. And now what I'm going to do is I just want to now try to locate and it, well actually but before I even do that, let's let's make sure I'm happy with this kind of original sketch. Is there is there any kind of glaring problems in here? Do I see anything that is like, whoa, I've totally misjudged the size or distance of this and that? I don't think so off the top as I'm looking at it. <clears throat> Feeling like things are pretty good. <clears throat> you know, not every fold has been illustrated on there and some things, you know, I could make some tiny adjustments. <clears throat> like maybe this is a little bit, you know, closer in here, but I'm not too worried. This is again, our warm up drawing. And even then it's unlikely, you know, anyone's going to say, actually the cloth should have been two centimeters longer over here. Right. <laughs> Probably not going to happen. Another quick little thing that we can notice is just because of all of the lights that I have on in here is we have some competing shadows. Like we have light coming in from this side. Or where's my pencil? Is it showing up there? So I've got light kind of coming straight down over here, which you can see is creating these shadows in here, all right? And then I've also got light coming in from this direction. And then that's creating some of these shadows in behind, right? And you can see this shadow over here, right? So there's multiple shadows. Do I want to draw all those shadows in? Probably a little bit. I can hint at it, but let's just kind of get started. And in fact, I'm going to let's do as much as we can here in 10 minutes. I want to try to do a bunch of drawings in about 10 minutes or less. So the before I, I'm not even going to worry necessarily about the texture at this point. I'm going to consider it maybe as I go here. In fact, I think I've got enough with my, my orange and my orange is just the, 
the initial sketch. So if I was just using a black and like a gray pencil, you know, just like anything like this, these lines that I've made in orange would be very, very light. They'd be almost invisible, especially this ball here, All right? Okay, so now the blue is meant to signify kind of going a little bit darker. So I guess, you know, I, one thing I can do is think about the texture of this cloth. If I make really strong, hard lines as I do this, it's going to look more like a piece of plastic, like saran wrap or um, uh, just a kind of a light, flexible, like a plastic bag or something, right? Because that would be really slick lines. So one thing, you know, I'm looking at this cloth and it's kind of, you know, it's got that a little bit of a texture. So as I'm going to do this, I'm actually going to give it, I don't know if it even shows up well on the screen, but just these little kind of bumpy ridges. And I don't necessarily need to do this all the way around, but uh, it will kind of help for sure to kind of give a little bit more of the texture of this object. All right, so you can already see that this little, these little kind of bumps are kind of making it look a little bit more specific, right? Again, I got seven and a half minutes here on my clock, so I'm gonna kind of work a little quick, quickly. I had a, an instructor um, in art school named Mike Kelly many years ago, who's um, passed away since, um, but he would, he would often talk with me about, we would talk a lot about shorthand and different kinds of drawing shorthands that one might have. Um, because at the time I was making drawings while driving around the freeways in Los Angeles. And some of that artwork is uh, up on my uh, website if you're curious what that looks like. And um, and because I was, I was drawing without really looking too much at my hand for obvious reasons, um, I would kind of, and because things were moving so quickly, I would use a shorthand, just like as if you were dictating, you know, I guess people don't really use, sh there's probably a lot of younger people who don't even, haven't even heard of that term, or they've heard it and don't know the origin, but back in the day, um, people, particularly like secretaries, would you know, be taking notes uh, of people talking or people studying. You know, if you were in a lecture hall, you might kind of come up with a kind of a shorthand to help you take notes really quickly. So, and there are certain um, kind of established types or kind, but you know, sometimes people come up with their own. So for instance, long story short is let's say um, you would like certain words that would reoccur in, let's say, use the lecture kind of, you're, it's an Egyptian, uh, architecture, ancient Egyptian architecture course, right? Where, um, you know, so every, t and today's episode is all about Tutankhamun. Well, instead of writing Tutankhamun the second or, or whatever the young King Tut you would maybe just write KT right that would be an example of a kind of shorthand right and so that maybe other people reading your notes would like I have a, what is this per what does KT mean but you know right you're because you're, you're like oh I, I know exactly what this is right so just so we have an idea here for and a half minutes, so just under five minutes. Okay, so how do I get this whole drawing done in five minutes or less? Well, I'm gonna quickly kind of lay in some shadows here. 
So I'm use, kind of squinting my eye. My, I'm, that's right, I'm trying to remember now. I, we actually forget which eye am, is more dominant. Um, so I, I'm squinting one eye and looking at the monitor, trying to see like, actually I'm, I'm squinting with both eyes, sorry. Um, trying to see what is the darkest parts of this image. And then I'm just using my pencil to really quickly add some darkness in here. So these are kind of the darker areas and I'm gonna have to make some adjustments. I'm not sure, this, this is our warm up drawing so I'm, I'm gonna have to a little more time to the clock here just to, to get going um, because you know one thing I can think about is like where is the brightest parts of this image you know I see a highlight right here that's really bright here here and in here and if, like on this edge but otherwise a lot of this drawing is um, is going to need to get darker. So I'm actually just gonna go a little bit faster because things are gonna, there's very little white here on this page. So you can see as I'm doing this, I'm just trying to add a little bit of the shape. So I'm trying to get a little bit of this ball volume under here. And if I'm going light enough, I don't have to worry so much about doing it perfectly, right? Because I'm gonna. This is gonna get darker and darker as I go. And I might kind of end up having to go over some areas again. If I was using a pen it would be a little bit different. I would uh, have a diff totally different approach to shading, which is maybe one thing I've been thinking about is maybe I should do a whole session on pen drawing rather than just pencil drawing, because um, not all that we often use, not just pencils when we're drawing, but pens as well. Okay, so I've kind of got, I got two minutes left and I've got this kind of general shading over most of this. So I'm gonna go ramp it up and go much faster here. And let's get some darker areas in here. You can see I can also use the texture of this paper, right? It's got this kind of, uh, there's a bit of tooth on here as we would, we would say. And I'm gonna use that, to, it can also kind of act and stand in for the, uh, the texture of the of the cloth, right? Just for the sake of simplicity of finishing this, I'm going to have to omit some of these folds and kind of simplify things a little bit. So I want to. So it's kind of like I need to get specific to a certain extent, and then there's just only so much I'm gonna be able to do. Okay, so like right in here. See, once we start getting a little bit darker like that, boom, things start to kind of pop a little bit. In fact, I'm gonna go and as I'm shading this, I'm kind of kind of digging under a little bit. Now, there is a bit of a reflection underneath here that I'm not gonna be able to, I'm just gonna kind of ignore because it's a little bit beyond our pay grade for this class because that's reflected. Well, that we'll use that maybe when we, when we talk about glass but just for this initial warm up. 
drawing. And you can see also the way I'm shading here is I'm also using, I want to create this look of the, the fuzziness of the shadow as well, right? Because if I do a hard edge shadow next to this hard edge fabric, it's going to look a little bit weird. Okay, so that was 10 minutes. I'm going to try to wrap this up within, let's say, I'm going to add, let's say, four more minutes onto here. It should be ample time to move on. Okay. Two more minutes and then I definitely will move on as as I've said before you know if you're working on yours and and you're really happy with where it's going and you want more time feel free just to pause the episode and finish your drawing you know and then just unpause when you're ready or come back in a few days or whenever you like and, and finish watching the, the rest of it um, now as things move back into space, they're going to get darker or, or sort of not darker, um, less distinct and, and a little bit softer. So even though these shadows are kind of dark, I don't want to go too dark because then they're going to jump forward and try to compete with these shapes here. So really the darkest, darkest places should be the closest to us. Kind of like this cloth right down here at the front. And I'm actually going to make this right under here. dark as possible. Fabric studies are a lot of fun, and I mean, I think so, because you could leave this cloth sitting somewhere on a shelf or on a table for like a week, you know, assuming no one in your house touches it or moves it, and it's going to stay the same, and you can keep on working it on it kind of infinitely. Um, there's my timer again, so I am going to move on, and I realize this is not completely finished. Um, one of the things, you know, when people are applying to art school, what they'll, it used to be anyway, I'm not, it's been a while since I've applied to art school, 
but one of the things that they used to ask you for is a fabric study or still life and so they would ask you to do something similar to this like drape a, a sweater or a sock over a chair and try drawing that All right we could you know um, just because it really forces it, it helps instructors so that can make ah, it's so hard for me just to let go isn't it um, it helps to see kind of where you're at in your ability and also kind of you know how open to learning you actually are and if you can even even if you want to become a photographer being able to do this kind of thing shows the the school that you're applying to that you know you're you're open to to learning these basic kinds of things because often in art school you still have to take basic drawing classes regardless of whatever kind of uh, degree you end up wanting to pursue okay so actually you know just before I do move on So I, let's say I do want this to be a finished drawing and I'm kind of almost out of time. What I'm going to do is just go back over some of these lines just to make them a little bit more distinct um, because I don't have the time to kind of really shade this in properly. So I have to make sure it is, it makes logical sense to anybody watching or, or looking at it without seeing the, the original image. All right, so. This area here, I'm not too happy with that. I would definitely spend a little more time on there. But as I said, I'm out of time, so. Okay, so I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna turn the page and let's try something new and different. Plash says, are you going to do a class about the tongue? Oh, interesting. Um, I wasn't planning on it. Um, that would be an interesting, that's a texture that is uh, quite complex for sure. <laughs> the, a, uh, a tongue. Most, that, that's, that is really specific. So most of the time people aren't, there's not that many people wanting to know how to draw tongues. Um, so let's, let's move this down here. How does that look? Okay. I think I think we're gonna draw this. What I, I like is this kind of shadow coming down here. So I want to draw that. You know, one thing you could do is you could literally take like a glass and put it on your let's see on your sketchbook kind of like this and an exercise you could do is to to literally trace the shadow and see if you can kind of shade in these kind of uh in fact how about let's uh well this would be a fun drawing for sure um but it would be a little bit difficult. I'm trying to think how I could, because I'd also like to draw the glass itself. And I'm going to see a totally different perspective. So, but that that would be one thing you could do. I think you can kind of, I think, hopefully see the potential of that even just. Okay, so how would we draw this glass over here? Well, let's do the same thing. Let's sketch it out. Okay, so um, we want to find this oval shape. Let's so do that line. Does that look like the one over there? Not quite. I think it needs to be more round. How does that look? Closer. Right. 
today we're focusing on these on the reflections and textures so even then I'm not going to worry too much about getting this cup perfect you can see it kind of tapers down a little bit both I mean actually the cup is almost you know per perfectly cylindrical but the angle we're looking at it from above is kind of making it kind of seem like the bottom is much smaller than it actually is so this is going to be very similar to the bottom just a smaller circle And one way I can kind of judge how well I'm kind of in that area is just looking at this distance between this is the far edge of the cup and I know that there's like a bunch of different rings here and we'll get to there in a second but just is this roughly are we kind of in the ballpark because if this was twice as big ah, there we go I'm losing camera all of a sudden here I'm just gonna replacing this battery mid-show so then it <laughs> always lasts exactly halfway through so I'm gonna have to I think today's class just charge it no matter where it is okay anyway let's get back to this okay so I want to make sure that this is roughly in the ballpark you know if this was much longer than that would tell me that the glass is either way too tall or that maybe these you know like this shape this initial oval light needs to be much kind of more circular and less flat right okay we can also quickly sketch in we've got two shadows here so I'm just gonna kind of draw we got one very faint shadow like that this kind of ring and then we've got a darker one it kind of stretches almost the same line basically just sort of goes off the page right okay so the other thing I'm gonna do here and glass is tricky uh, because we have all of these different reflections going on in here. So again, let's say, I'm gonna try to do this in as close to 10 minutes as possible, all right? So I'm what I'm doing here is just, again, these are the almost invisible lines, right? Your drawing, you would expect them to be much lighter than mine. So I'm just, these are kind of guidelines as to if I want to kind of have a whole bunch of little shadows going all over the place and reflections, this is what I would do. Okay. Oh, we've got a couple more. Some of these. And I also chose this particular glass over something like this one. Which is, you know, I'm not going to even put it down because I don't want to just, well, let's see, what we'll disturb things. I mean, you can see how much more complicated this is with all of these different kinds of, of planes. And so way more complex than the one that we're studying. I didn't want to overwhelm people too much with this. Okay, I'm going to sharpen this. So I'm going to start kind of outlining and so this would just be as if I was drawing a little bit darker. Because now I'm saying, okay, I'm going to set, I have all of these wildly drawn pencil lines all over the place. I'm just going to kind of give it a little bit more clarity as to where it begins and ends the actual volume of it. OK. 
Okay. Now comes the part where we're going to start adding a little bit. We're going to get darker and darker as we start adding some of these reflections. And the key to this and, and pulling it off well is, is really a, being careful about observing things. All right. So here what I'm doing, this is the top part of the glass, you know. So um, we got this inside and we got a couple of reflections going on. Okay, so seven minutes. Let's see how much we can do here. So first thing, I'm gonna really, with glass too, it really helps to be pretty bold. All right, so I'm gonna darken some of these areas here and I don't have to get it all right. As long as I'm kind of leaving some of these areas as highlights, And this area is a little bit is further behind, so it's not going to be as distinct and dark as some of these other places here. Okay. So what are the darkest parts of this image here? So I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of going around looking for the darker areas, getting those in. So there's also a lot, often kind of like you're leaving little, like you're almost not going quite up to the edges of things. You almost like kind of leave a little bit of breathing room between some of these colors or, or uh, shapes or lines. If you, if you want, you could also kind of uh, use a, a white pencil afterwards to kind of pop in a little bit of light back into some areas. It's actually also quite fun to do with uh, with ink is to try to do a glass with ink. And I'm also, as I'm going here, I'm gonna start uh, maybe taking a few liberties. You know, if I, if I really wanted to, to nail this and get it exactly right, it would be a matter of really spending some time. I got like four minutes left on my clock here, so I'm not gonna have an opportunity to kind of get all of these reflections really nailed in here. But, and some of this orange is, is kind of causing a little bit of difficulty because that's areas that should be kind of sparkling white of the page. So that's why you'd want to be drawing as lightly as possible. Let's see if I do have my white, if I'll be able, if it'll be able to come over top of, ah, ah this is just a cheap white pencil. Hmm. Yeah, it's not gonna help too much. So 
So you see what I'm trying to do is a little bit of cheating just to kind of show that this is the front of the glass here. Because I think I made this a little bit too dark in here. In these areas, I'm going to have to darken up even more. Okay. While this is going, I've got a couple minutes here. I'm just going to start quickly doing some of the shadow. Um, one thing with glass is... It would be nice, to, you know, if I had a little bit more time, what I would try to do is have a little bit, you know, these uh, stronger, less kind of fuzzy outlines, right? We want something that looks very sharp and solid. And so that's something I'd want to really pay attention to as I shade this. And even as I'm shading here, I'm also just trying to keep the shape of the glass a little bit. Makes me think about wanting to get out some of my acrylic paint to put a little bit of these little pot spots of white back into here because they're not showing up super well in just with all my sketching. If I was to draw this drawing again, I would allow really kind of pay attention to where these highlights would be and I would draw very lightly. So there's So, I could continue working on this. I really do want to. I, I think glass is probably, glass and metal would be your, your two most complex kind of um, uh, um, surfaces textures to draw because of all the reflections so let's I'm just gonna get this a little bit darker here. And it's all of these kind of interlocking, crisscrossing kind of patterns that are going to really help sell this, this drawing. So, if we could work on this forever. Part of the other thing too is I would also shade the background and darken that as well so it's not just pure white so um, I don't really have time to do that either right now but I think you kind of get the 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 gist of the the beginning of this All right um, so let's go to another page here let's try a different texture um, Let's see, piece of wood. Okay, I'm just gonna 
separating that. That side is better. Does it need to be even brighter? Maybe it needs to be even brighter. So by brightening it up, I've lost a little bit of the shadow, but I think we can make this work as well. So let's um, let's start out here with trying to get this shape on the page. I'm not too concerned about making it look exactly like the original, just so that we can play around with this texture so how I'm just kind of looking at these diagonals and do I need to kind of okay I feel like I need to trim in a bit same thing that needs to maybe come up a bit this might need to come down Okay, so this, I'm just going to kind of darken it in a little bit so I can see. This here is a piece of cedar that was given to me by a good friend of mine, Brian Davies from Brastronaut. We were smoking meat. I'm a vegetarian now, so this is had this piece of wood for a long time. Uh, okay, actually, maybe while I tell this story, I should, the, what I'm doing here is just really quickly figuring out there's a knot in here and I'm gonna exaggerate it a little bit it's a pretty small knot but you see how I kind of begin with a circle and then I'm kind of creating these lines that seem to kind of get bigger and bigger as they move away from that and then it kind of straightens back out so this here is closer to the center of the tree versus this is further away and obviously because the bark is on this side but you can kind of see how we have these these ones are kind of straight up and down and as we get closer they start going diagonal okay so if i've got that in place let's now do start kind of going in a little bit darker Say 10 minutes from here to finish. Okay, so I'm gonna. What I want to do is up here, even though it's kind, I can't quite see it. I want to make sure I emphasize that this is not. Even if it was cut with a saw, it's not like a piece of glass. It's just gonna have these little jagged edges a little bit, right? And as I'm going here, I'm just my, my, I'm allowing for a little bit of bumpy kind of lines, right? Sort of like when I was doing the cloth, right? So I'm, I'm, I want to welcome a little bit more of hesitancy in my line because that reflects wood better. And I, 
allow myself to take some um, creative liberties here. I can't even quite see in the monitor, but I know that this is like the bark has got a, a thickness to it. So even though I can't see it in the picture or on the monitor very well, I, I need to make this clear for the viewer that this here is a thick piece of bark on the edge. So again, if you're drawing from a photograph, I know I've said this many times, but sometimes you have to draw things that aren't there or uh, draw it so-called wrong in order to make it work, in order to make it, it, it better. So we have these kind of random kind of shredded pieces kind of sticking out. Okay, got seven minutes. I'm gonna go back to this knot and kind of work my way out from there. kind of these are just like a tree trunk these knots things kind of radiate outwards from it and wood for me is one of the most satisfying textures to draw there's so much we can do here like I could I could literally do a whole class on just drawing this object itself and really nailing this would be really super satisfying for for not only me and but I think also for like people when they see it they're like oh they can tell that it's a piece of wood so it's this all of these kind of lines on here and sometimes you know the lines can kind of end in here and then sometimes they continue. And I, I don't have to draw each one of them. And I'm just gonna make a few of them a little bit darker. I can also just do that later on. I can just draw a whole bunch of these lines and you can also notice they're not drawn too quickly, right? I'm kind of allowing for them to go a little bit slower. I want them to be a little bit imprecise. It's that wavy quality that's going to make them believable. Okay, so then I can kind of, I can again look back at the, the image on the left as kind of inspiration and I can go, okay, well, I'm going to darken a few of these. Right, I can even use the side of my pencil just to kind of darken some areas in. I'm just going to shade in this side. Okay, so I got four minutes left here. So let's see, we've got this shadow here. I'm actually even just going to turn my sketchbook a little bit to get this. Um, I can even get a little bit of shadow 
here. Okay. I don't see too much, um, too many, I don't really see any highlights in here. So one thing about wood is it's, for the most part, totally matte, right? It reflects virtually no light. So I'm just gonna darken this. So this is kind of like the, the across section of the, of the, the bark. And even though it's not, I can kind of see that a little bit down here, but not so much on the edges. I have to make that clear to who's ever looking at it that that's happening and that that's there. So yeah, wood reflects very, very little light. So if there was any kind of bright lights shining on it, it, would, it wouldn't leave like a, a sharp highlight like the glass. It would be diffused and kind of soft. So, what I'm, I'm just going to add a little bit of just r little textury things here on the bark. Even though, you know, I, I could walk over there and take a little bit of a closer look at this texture, which would be ideal, but you at home can't do that. So I'm not going to cheat and allow myself to kind of do, look at it in any more detail than you can. So I'm just in this kind of darker area going in and adding just a little bit of again like little texture areas so that's not one flat thing like if this was a piece of plastic you know this would be a more consistent kind of a uh, uh, like it wouldn't have all these kind of jagged little pieces especially in the shadowy areas even just add little even though they're not there sometimes just that those little dots kind of it just makes it for me look like it's you know it's freshly cut and it's you know wood might leave some debris you know when it's laying on the table and it this thing has over time kind of slowly kind of fallen apart a little bit i'm just adding a little bit of with the side of my pencil kind of going back in and shading a bit. And I'm actually gonna just darken this shadow a little. Even though again in the video, it's not that dark. It's also because I boosted the brightness up pretty high so that we could actually see the texture. About four seconds. Whew. Okay. So that I think if I was if I was anybody and I was I was learning wood would probably be one of the funner things that I could do uh, drawings of you know I've got I paint often on on panels and so I have these these little panels so these any one of these could make for a real fascinating kind of drawing like I could draw all of these kind of this texture here it would be different than the texture of, of the of that wood all right but all of these that would be fun uh, to study okay um, how about I've got this this ball thing that uh, for our daughter this is what is this thing made of it's a um, Kind of rubbery. Uh, I think it's like a tactile toy for our daughter for her to play with, and it's you can kind of I don't know if you can see kind of squeeze it, and it's quite it's got some weight to it as well. So let's put that 
here. Okay. So let's go to another page. And this one is, is going to be kind of like the glass in that I'm going to, this time, I'm going to try to get a little bit more of those reflections in this drawing. So. sphere in here. Okay. And I'm also just going to draw this shadow here. We've got this kind of shape. And then we got a longer one here like that. Take a quick sip of tea before I tackle this one. Okay, so actually, maybe before I start doing some shading, I'm going to come here and I'm going to outline for myself where some of these brightest parts are. I don't need to do all of them. And let's I'm gonna start my 10 minute timer right now here. These are areas that I'm going to do my best to to keep um, nice and, and white of the page. All right. Okay. So one of the things I can do right now is I can just start going really dark. So this is going, this is all just dark, 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 you know, some of the darkest that I can get out of this pencil. All right, I can do my outline of this shape. And then I'm just going to kind of outline any of these big highlight areas. So the, some of this area that might be a little bit softer. I'm just going to be a little bit careful about making hard edges there. Okay. So I'm going to color this in, and I'm also, as I'm going to do this, thinking about continuing to emphasize the shape of this spherical object and to try to move my pencil in curving kind of directions. Because if I go straight across, then that's going to flatten this object. So as I come around here, I'm trying to curve, 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 curve. Okay. Same sort of thing here. I'm going to come around and shade this. OK. 
Okay. So, I'm going to now, I've got f six minutes on my clock here. I'm going to draw the, sh the shadow. So I'm just gonna, I want to lay in as much pencil as quickly as possible. I'm not so worried about it looking too clean or perfect because I'm going to put a bunch of layers over top of it. So. You'll see there's a little bit of a, a non-dark area in here. So I'm just going to be mindful of that because there's a bit of reflection off of that shape. this even darker shadow, very dark shadow. feel like pretty good with I got two, three minutes okay um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get as dark as I can in here this area not totally bright white same so I'm getting a little bit of pencil on my hand if that's a problem I can always just take another piece of paper put it down to kind of so if I want to rest my hand on it it's not going to smudge everywhere So again, I'm having to kind of invent a little bit here to make it work. So I'm kind of lightening this up a little bit so that I can get, and then 
um, a little bit more of the roundness of this sphere. So I'm concerned that it might look a little flat. That's another 10 minutes. So, you know, I could spend more time getting even more subtle shift of uh, light and dark between these, these different kinds of shapes in here. And this could be even way more subtle than I've done. Um, that would just require a lot more time and just being really sensitive to the, to the differences in those two different tones. But... Um, I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. Okay. Um, let me think. We've had requests for fur and feathers, neither of which I have here. So let me think. Um, how about I'll do a... Let me uh, do a quick search for feather, and then I'll let's switch this to okay. So let's look up feather here, because this is something that Heidi mentioned earlier. So I'm just doing a quick Google search here. Let's look for something large. You know, it's it's. I, I'm noticing here, where is it? I saw drawing a feather. Rather than just looking for a photograph, it can be helpful just to see. You can take advantage of the, of the technology that we have, right? That I can go online and click and quickly see how different people have drawn feathers, right? Um, here, this image, we can see someone's drawing all of the, or, or not all, but sort of like hair, trying to capture a lot of the different kinds of, um, I don't know, what, what, what do you call these things? The, or, is it the hair of the feather? The, the, I'm sure there's a proper word for it. There's also kind of drawing kind of pure outline, which is also a really satisfying way of doing it, right? We can see this kind of more uh, graphic kind of clip art kind of style of, of uh, drawing this, right? So it's important to remember there's not just one way of doing it. Um, all right, here's somebody showing you how to draw feathers. <laughs> Pencil step by step. Right, here's somebody who's um, taking a much more creative approach to these kinds of, you know, just using the form right here as kind of the basis for an abstraction or drawing the silhouette version of this, right? There's plenty of these, right? Much more, these get very, very stylized. Okay, so that's, it's helpful to, to look at that, but let's kind of go back to, let's take the drawing off and feather photo. Come on, 
open up. There we are. So let's see. We're going to enlarge this big time. And fit all over on the screen. Okay, cool. So, and then let's. So going to a new page, obviously if you want, you could be using half the page or whatever you want to do, but I'm just going to draw nice and big for everybody. And went and bought a couple new sketchbooks today. So um, the other thing too, maybe just while I'm, I'm, we're doing this is different paper is going to work better for different situations. As we've seen, the paper I'm using uh, is... So th it's this um, Canson Mixed Media. Why I like these kind of sketchbooks is, you know, they say acrylic, watercolor, pen, and pencil. So I could paint on these. I could glue collage in there, newspaper clippings, or feathers, random leaves, and I could you know, glue it all in here. And the paper's thick enough that it's going to absorb the water well without rippling too much like a piece of photocopy paper. Um, the disadvantage is is that it, it, if you want to think of it, is has some texture. So it's not totally smooth like a piece of vellum we would call. Vellum uh, originally was like a rabbit skin pulled super tight like a drum. Um, but now obviously it's there's synthetic in fact, I, I, I don't know where you'd find real vellum these days, but synthetic vellum is like a plastic, like mylar, super, super slick. Um, so slick that some materials won't even stick to it, right? Like you, you really, you could use charcoal on it, but it would, it would smudge very, very easily, which again, could be a positive. Anyway, um, so this would not be the best material to draw like, as you saw, glass and metal with, with a, a really heavy tooth, thick tooth textured paper. I'd want to be going for something a little bit smoother than this. I like this paper because it's a little bit in between. Um, I actually don't like a lot of texture in my paper normally, but uh, anyway. So let's draw this feather here. And maybe, maybe I'm going to just so I can get the full, let me make it nice and big. I'm actually just gonna turn this up here like that so that then, so this is gonna be the inside, uh, I don't know again what the term would be, the, the, the quill maybe of the, the spine of the feather. I don't know what, again, what you would call these things, but so obviously it starts kind of wider and then tapers to, a, a, to the, to, not only to a point that it just basically disappears, it fades right out, right? Now the rest of this feather, I'm just going to, let's say, draw the general shape of it. So one side is, a little bit bigger than the other. So again, people tell me I'm not drawing dark enough. Even though I would want, I wouldn't want to draw this dark um, as as at this stage. But just so people at home can see what I'm doing, I'm just make it a little bit darker. Um, so this kind of break right here and then this kind of comes up I've got all this kind of separated a bit here and otherwise most of it's pretty consistent right so I'm just gonna quickly lay this in Yeah, 
know, depending on how much time you have with like a feather, like this could be done, right? I, I could say I've captured everything I want about the feather right there. And you maybe, maybe that's fine. We just looked at a few other images where there was more, more detail and some that were pure silhouette, right? I could just outline this and a couple quick little lines inside and done. Um, so how would I go about, how would I personally go about it? Well, I kind of want a little bit of both. I want a little bit of the, the texture inside to kind of show through. and a little bit of the silhouette and also just because of the, the time constraints of this class and let's see if i can this is just going to erase a little bit in here you can see i kind of smudged out a little bit maybe i can if i if i want i could kind of go back in and shade that and I'm also just going to give it a little bit of a kind of, not a, a totally hard edge. So I want to think about like any of these could be for these strands of the feather. So what I'm just doing, some of this little stuff is just the, the paying attention to the shape and and even if I, I'm, I can make a, a little bit of, take a little bit of, of uh, artistic license here to give it, so just to give it more personality and a little bit more variety. So, oh, let's say 10 minutes here. And I think this will be our final drawing. Um, next class we're, is called Drawing the Clothed Figure. So we're gonna draw people wearing clothes. I haven't posted the, the, the video yet but I should do that by this evening so one of the, the things here this line in the center I don't know what the the root or the the quill or um, of the feather I'm making a little bit more solid of a line less of a hesitant line. I'm trying to get that as kind of solid as possible. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of shading on one side. I can see there's like kind of little stripey things down here. So, I mean, the ultimate thing about today's lesson is really looking closely at things and kind of all the answers are in the object that you're drawing um, it's just a matter of giving it that attention um, by looking carefully at things and you know, I think it was in an email Ramon sent me, but because um, he also sent some more, he took some of the, the suggestions I gave him in the last class and and did a little more work on his work and then up sent them to me. I don't know if maybe we'll have. I'll try to see if I can have some time at the very end here to maybe show that Heidi sent some more drawings. And if you've got drawings you'd like me to see send them in 
even if, you know, um, this is, if you're watching this video three years from now, I would still love to, to see those artworks. It doesn't, just because we're, you know, I'm filming this in real time right now, doesn't mean that the kind of the class is only for these, you know, the people that are so-called in attendance live, right? I'd still love to see years later. I mean, people send me that kind of stuff all the time with some of the painting classes that I've done, and I find it so fascinating. So I'm sure there's somebody watching this in 2023 or 2025, and uh, I was like, oh, I wonder if, if that guy's still around. Well, hopefully <laughs> I'm still kicking around doing something, and it would be a real pleasure to see um, what you've created. So what I'm doing right now is a bit of mindless activity, but it's also really fun. Like, I'm just kind of... I can't really see too much of the texture of these feathers, so I'm kind of inventing my own way of doing it. And that's, I think, a big takeaway, too, is that everybody's got their own way of doing it. So don't... You know, today we've been really kind of looking at how I would approach some things. Um, but it's, I'm not the only, you know, I, I, you shouldn't sort of take my way as the only way, my way or the highway. You feel free to um, use your own imagination. Part of what's so great about art is we see things through different people's eyes, right? So. I want to encourage you to um, to kind of come up with your own shorthand, come up with your own way of drawing and um, making things specific to you. Like you might see this feather in a very different way than than the drawing that I'm making right now, and you might be like, "Well, that's weird. He decided to do that. That's not what I would have done." Well then draw it the way that you see it. You know, maybe you want to try my way and and then react against it. You know, I, I find that in, in art school, students will, will, they like to kind of, I encourage them to challenge me and to, and so sometimes they're like, you know what, this, this bum, I'm going to like, uh, I'm going to take his assignment and I'm just going to flip it on its head and I'm going to, do something totally wild and and show him thinking I'm that they're gonna really drive me crazy, make me really angry. <laughs> and then I'm like, wow, that is so cool. Wait, and then there's like, oh, you you like that? I thought you were gonna yell at me or something. And I'm like, no, I'm, I want you to to find your own voice and to and sometimes. That means sort of kind of rebelling a little against the assignment outline. You know, I kind of think of like art is is that way where we really encourage people um, to find their voice and, and their own distinct way of 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 uh, representing the world and their experience. So, unlike a lot of other disciplines where, you know, it's either right or wrong and you're kind of proving some kind of scientific theorem or um, art is, you know, it's, it's, you can't really say somebody did something quote-unquote wrong. You might say, I don't like the way a certain thing looks, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. Like, there's plenty of art that I dislike. You know, just because I'm an artist doesn't mean I I like everything every, every other artist is making out there, so. Okay. So, I 
think I'm going to leave. So I, I could continue going. I could put a shadow under here. There's a number of other things I could, you know, I could add a little bit of color. But I, I like the way that this has turned out so far. Right? You saw how I was going over and I started with all of these kind of uh, individual stripes, maybe you could call them. And I also added a little bit of variety. They're not all exactly the same. Right? You can see some of them are kind of overlapping and that just gives it a little bit more personality and you know some of these little areas here you know like where the feathers kind of become a little I don't know um, messed up a little bit that's also kind of nice to see and then I just went over and just added a little bit of shading and darkened with uh, blending techniques some of these areas and not the whole thing leaving some stripes just randomly you know does it look exactly like the image on the left no personally as an artist i am have very little interest in replicating reality i kind of want i see everything as just an inspiration for another artwork um, kind of like when we were drawing portraits i'm not too concerned about nailing the likeness i just like because i for me Art is sort of, I, I like being surprised by the art that I do. I like it when I'm making something and I'm like, whoa, that is, I did not expect that this to go in that direction, right? Then it's, it's like being a viewer in a scary movie or something. You're like, oh my goodness, what, what's behind that door? Well, we're going to find out because we're going to open it with this next few lines and ah oh, sometimes it's really scarier oh it's a pot of gold i just stumbled into right so you never know what you're going to get if you kind of allow yourself to, to approach it in a bit more of an open-minded kind of uh, fashion okay let me see here i'm going to put my drawing back up if i can figure out to continue working on that and while that's happening I'm just gonna see if I can find some of the images okay there's the timer for another 10 minutes hey yeah yeah oh no oops didn't mean to close that folder okay Today, episode 36 my goodness next class is in September are you kidding me oh my goodness um, uh, I think is it just Heidi's image oh uh, Ramon so many I get so many emails that sometimes they just kind of roll in while I'm in the middle of a class and like oh my goodness um, okay so Oh, you can see everything I'm doing right now. Oops. So these are some fabric studies that uh, Heidi did over the uh, uh, last few days. I think actually she may have done these before last class. I can't quite remember, but um, this is something I would suggest everybody do is it looks like she's just taken a like a, a blanket or a shawl or a, a scarf and just draped it over a chair 
right? And then try to draw the uh, the folds in here. In when I was in art school, we did something similar to this. I had one class where we basically just did this for an entire semester. So we did about 40 different drawings of just different kinds of fabric layered over top of one another. So sometimes you'd have to try to create the distinction between two different kinds of fabric. One of the great things is using fabric that's got stripes on it or checkers or not like in something sim simple like this because you don't want to choose something with really complicated patterns like like maybe my shirt for instance that would be something that would be way more advanced to try to do something like that but something with a few simple stripes like that like a hudson's bay blanket um would you know a beach towel like that would work really well or uh, but, you know, if you had like anchors or fish or, you know, happy face, all those kind of things are just going to make it really like trying to get capture those kind of shapes on curving fabric would drive you nuts. But simple kind of um, stripes like this other one that she sent in, like fabulous drawing, like love all these nice, these delicate, like the difference in these very delicate folds and then these larger ones works really well and beautiful and you can see how well these stripes work to help show the the shapes kind of overlapping right that some of these lines disappear between uh, or behind other lines so we understand that like for instance this line goes here disappears probably folds under and comes up the same sort of thing this one goes up and under and folds here right so those things are just very satisfying it's like because you can follow it with your eyes if you were and then here's a drawing this is what um, got my mind thinking about doing something like this at the beginning of today's class so again thanks Heidi for sending in all these great artworks and really kind of um, uh, helping me get on on a good track today so here's some more drawings, fantastic drawings that Ramon sent in. Um, here's one of Morgan Freeman, right? Like beautiful, like you really kind of, one of the things with Morgan Freeman is like those little freckles on his face and you nailed, so you got those, which is really important to create a likeness of him. Um, but you even managed to, let's see if we can zoom in here a bit. You manage to kind of get a little bit of that uh, uh, stubble on his face, right? He's got a little kind of kind of thin beard that is also turning a little bit white, right? So this this is your own kind of shorthand that you you're developing here, right? Same thing in the, the hair. He's got this, you know, almost I think white or, or very light gray afro and with this kind of spiraling drawing strategy you've used here as you know we can we understand that it's hair because it's drawn differently than the skin right and that's important because if you drew the hair the same way you drew the skin then it gets it's confusing for the person looking at it i mean the person looking at it isn't like oh what's cool? but they they just look at it and think there's something a little bit weird there or it's not believable or not realistic or those kind of things right even though this is just a bunch of scribbles in here but it's our mind thinks okay not skin hair right so all that's super effective i really like the way that you've done the the shading in his face here and and on his uh the beard and then so i gave a few little suggestions i uh, to Ramon about how to improve this drawing, and I suggested kind of going in here and darkening the eyes, because before they were kind of white, like the flash going off in the eyes. And look how it just looks a little bit warmer, I think maybe a little bit, or it doesn't look kind of creepy anymore, <laughs> like he's got, you know, uh, light radiating out of his eyes, and you just added a little bit of darkness in here. I think that's super effective, and even darkening his jacket, I think, worked really well, right underneath the nose. So just if I if I was thinking, we would I could show them side by 
side. Can I quickly do that? Actually, let's do just that. So I'm actually just going to go back here, and I'm going to bring this one in so we can see the difference here. So here's on the, the left, obviously, is the the original one that he sent in and then the one on the right is his improved version All right and you can see it's just those tiny little things like in the eyes that just seem to give it a little bit more life All right love that and then we'll, we can go to this is the Frida Kahlo so the, this is the new and improved one on the right I'm just gonna drag this back and again just darkening in the hair a little bit helps kind of separate it from these flowers right darkening in those eyes now this face it, it pops a little bit more there's a just it radiates a little bit more energy and down here in the around the fingers just subtle little tweaks where we amp up the contrast make a huge huge difference Okay, so I think that is enough for today. I, again, just an introduction to different kinds of textures. We could spend hours and hours looking around for different kinds of things that we could draw. Um, but the, the main thing is, is looking carefully at things. And sometimes it's just like making a contrast for yourself. So if you're looking at a piece of glass and you want to draw glass, looking at how it is reflecting light next to, let's say, the seashell, which I was hoping we would draw today, but uh, um, you can't quite see that, can you? Like, right, the light reflects off it very differently, right? So even though the same light is hitting these, this one, we can see these bright, sharp highlights, like high contrast between the light and the dark versus here everything is much smoother and this would would work really well on the paper that i i was using my sketchbook paper right because you can already see the texture of this uh um shell right would you know would work really well for that texture of the paper versus this would kind of we would want something maybe a little bit smoother of paper to really nail it perfectly right um okay so i could go on and on i'm sure as you know you're probably like yeah i know this guy does a lot of talking uh, um so i think we're gonna end for today uh on next class we're gonna be talking about clothes and people wearing clothes so we're gonna be not only drawing figures but we're going to be drawing them wearing clothes so it might be worth kind of going back if especially if this is the first episode you're watching it might be worth going back and spending a little bit of time watching some of the earlier episodes where we were drawing figures we're not going to worry about getting the faces all right and all that but just because we're going to be uh i think it's like the line of action and the um uh the block in method episodes which are probably episode 22 24 i think around there um would be good, good ones to kind of watch before next week's episode um anyway thank you everybody for tuning in watching if you're uh enjoying these episodes like and subscribe hit the notification bell share it with some of your friends share your drawings online and, and tag me with them so that people can see where the inspiration is coming from and maybe you encourage other people to learn how to draw wouldn't it be a great world if everybody was drawing and was able to express themselves creatively think about how good you feel when you make a good drawing and how relaxing like you know like time just flies you know and wouldn't that be a gift you could share other people or with other people um and if you want to make a small paypal contribution a dollar or a thousand dollars the link is below um so anyway thank you everybody for tuning in watching another episode drawing along with me we'll see you next week get a little bit of drawing done in the meantime like ramon and heidi have been doing some drawings on their own as well so that's a great encouragement 
for you as well to, to take their, uh, their lead and follow. We'll see you guys. Thank you.